in this example, I've converted the surveyed center line into a master string using the modify edit strings convert to a master string option. I've then moved that master string into a new design model using the modify move strings option. The overlay design tabular method option is available if you have a MX Renew or a MX Road Suite license. You can use this option to design an overlay scheme using a table of crossfalls and widths. So let's type a new scheme name, click next to get to the function control panel. The only option available to start with is to define surfaces wizard and this is where we specify our models and strings. So I'm going to select that master string. Now I might have already designed road edges and if I have I can pick them here. In this example I'm going to use the existing road edges. And here I specify the existing ground model and the existing road edges. I'm just going to reduce the left and right offsets. I click next to process that information and then we see a cross section view where the white solid line is the existing road surface and we can click run to step through the changes checking for anomalies in the survey. If we're happy with the data we can click finish. So we're back to the function control panel and the next two options available are to specify overlay depths and crossfall tolerances. These two options are both also available inside the parametric fitting option, so let's use that one next. The parametric fitting panel contains a menu bar and four views, a cross section, a profile, a super elevation view and an editor. From the annotation menu we can select a range of annotation. Here I've got crossfalls and contours turned on. I'm just going to go to the view options menu and in my annotation tab I'm going to say that I want a regular change interval and I'm just going to increase that text size a little. We can see that the contours are perpendicular to the road center line and that's because the only design information we've specified so far is that we want to match the existing edges. So we can see in the cross section view the blue solid line represents our road surface so extending to the existing edges but with no crossfalls at the moment. I don't know exactly what the crossfalls are along the length of the scheme so I'm going to ask the software to calculate them for me. So to do that I'm going to use the crossfall tolerances option and I'm going to say that from the start chainage I'm going to allow a left and right up and down tolerance of 5% so starting from our design crossfall which is zero in this case vary the crossfalls up and down by 5% to try and match the existing crossfalls. We click the refit button and we see several things have happened. Our blue design graphic is sitting on the white existing surface graphic because we've matched the existing ground or the existing road cross sections. We see that the contours have changed. We see that the crossfall annotation has changed. And we see that we have a table now of showing our design crossfalls and our optimized crossfalls. And we can step along that table to move along the design and we can see how the crossfalls vary chainage by chainage on the left and the right hand side. In the cross section view we can see in the blue background across the top of the view the design left edge center line and right edge levels and the level difference between those design strings and the existing ground. Down at the bottom of the view we can see the level difference from the existing road edges up to the design surface. The next step is to review these uh, optimised crossfalls and we can see that for example at chainage 195 we've got 
uh, a standard um, cross fall of two and a half percent and then as we step up the changes we can see how some super elevation starts to come in through here I'll just pan the view and the super elevations coming in around the bend here so by inspecting these cross falls we may decide that we want to smooth them out slightly by specifying particular cross falls that we want to occur over certain chainage ranges so to do that I go into the template editor I'm going to specify several rows of data here so I'm going to click on the first row say add a row and start typing in the information that I want. I'm just going to start by typing in the, the changes where I want my cross falls to be set to certain values. Okay, now in this example we're going to match the existing road widths all the way through so I'm just highlighting all the rows and clicking match. Now I want to specify the cross falls. I've got an option here to mirror the cross fall so I'm going to use that, turn that on. I'm going to say at change 190 I want to be a cross fall of minus two and a half percent. Now actually I'm going to change that because we're still using the optimization at that change. So at change 195, I'm going to go minus 2.5%. Then I've identified that I want some super elevation at 550. The left hand side is the high side of the road, so I want 3.5% there. And I've used the invert option to get minus 3.5% on the right hand side. I want to hold that super elevation up to change 750 and then I want to go back to a, a mirror cross fault of 2.5% at change 900. Click the refit button and see what happens. So we can see that the design has been reprocessed but I've still got not only design cross falls but I've got optimized cross falls as well. And the reason for that is that we still have these crossfall tolerances in operation. So I can go back to the template editor and I can actually click this lock icon. And what that means is that when the optimization occurs, the crossfall tolerances are going to be ignored over these chainage ranges. In other words, I'm forcing these crossfalls to be used. So we'll click the refit button again. Let's just use our tracking bar here and move to a chainage on the, the curve and we can see now that at this particular chainage we have our design cross fall and we have no optimized values because we locked the design values. Having set the cross falls as we want them I'm going to use the overlay depths option and at chainage naught I want to use an overlay depth of naught add a row and at change 50 I want to use an overlay depth of 0.05 or 50 millimeters click refit again so in the cross section view let's just step forward a few changes actually we'll step up to change 50 now you'll see in the view this yellow circle now that represents the fitted profile the, which is where the centerline levels need to be to honour our cross falls and our overlay depths. Now the design does not automatically adopt that level because we might not want to use that level over the whole length of the scheme. In this case I do so I'm going to say I want to adopt the fitted profile over the whole chainage range of the scheme. Let's just step back to chainage 50 again and we can see in the cross section view now that we've achieved our uh, overlay depth of 50 millimeters but note that the critical point for that overlay depth was actually on the right hand channel we've actually got slightly more than 50 millimeters on the center line and the left channel 
if we look at the profile view and zoom in we'll see that that change in the overlay depth from 0 to 50 occurs over one chainage step and we may well want to smooth that out there are several ways that we can do this in this particular example I'm going to use a spline so I'm going to design my own profile using the spline method so this takes us into alignment and I need to locate some points and what I'm going to do is use the same option to specify a gradient there's where the step occurs so somewhere before there perhaps here I'm going to specify a point and I'm going to use the existing profile to snap to a second point there and those two points give me a gradient which I'm going to accept and then specify the point at which I want to use that gradient there so that's the first point defined I'm going to do a second point again I need to do the gradient so I'm going to use the same option again specify a point and I'm going to use the current profile same again to specify the second point there's the gradient calculated and pick the point at which I want to use that gradient so there it is so that's my two points and the two gradients defined use the analyze option so the splines fitted through there I can now accept that profile click back and yes I want to update the the current levels so if we look at our profile now we can see how the current profile which is the cyan line in the long section here smooths between the existing ground and the the fitted profile so that's the step in the overlay depths smoothed out and we can use the plan view just to confirm that that steps nice and smooth make sure the contours are looking regular through there so now the process would be con continue looking at the cross sections looking at the the profile we can also check the super elevation view okay so we can see here where we're matching the existing cross falls at the start transitioning to our super elevation and matching the cross falls further on the process would obviously now continue with optimizing the cross falls towards the end of the scheme but I'm going to say that I'm happy with this design as it stands and click finish so this takes us back to the function control panel there's a further range of options available now I'm going to cover the pavement layer design and reporting options in a separate tutorial